New research shows that cardio might actually improve hypertrophy by improving capillarization of the skeletal muscle. In today's session, we're going to take a deeper dive into this fascinating new study, the title of which is Short-Term Aerobic Conditioning Prior to Resistance Training Augments Muscle Hypertrophy and Satellite Cell Content in Healthy Men and Women. Now, what's important to recognize is this study used bilateral movements of the legs, and they had one leg doing resistance training plus cardio, and another leg just did resistance training. And this was over the course of a six-week study where the scientists, the investigators, were curious to see if there was any interference effect of aerobic conditioning on the hypertrophy from the resistance training. And so they did some isolateral, uh, unilateral leg studies and just cardio using uh, exercise bike using one leg. And in short, what they found is cardio doesn't actually decrease hypertrophy. It actually increases it by increasing the capillary density and the satellite cells within the muscle. And I think this is quite fascinating. I do want to thank Lane Norton for sharing this study about, a, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. And that's how I heard about this. And I downloaded the paper and read about it. And we're going to talk more about it here because it is quite fascinating because, again, Many people who are going to the gym, and I get clients who reach out to me all the time, hey, I'm working out, but I'm not building any muscle. And a lot of these people are not doing any cardio whatsoever. And I'm a fan of cardio, not doing intense prolonged cardio, but high intensity interval training or some sort of walking, some sort of movement just for the blood flow in and of itself. But also this new research shows that cardio improves capillarization within the muscle which helps to deliver more oxygen and nutrients and get rid of metabolic waste, which might help to improve hypertrophy of the muscle. So this was a six-week unilateral exercise training study where subjects went to the actual facility where they did three weeks of bilateral lower body resistance training exercises that involved primarily squats, leg presses, um, lunges, leg extensions, leg curls, and then in the arm or the one leg that because each subject was their own control in the sense because they have two legs. One leg was only doing RT, resistance training. The other leg was doing aerobic conditioning with RT. And that um, aerobic conditioning involved using a single leg bicycle for 40 minutes of moderate intensity continuous training. And the findings are that the resistance training plus the aerobic conditioning actually improved muscular hypertrophy. And this, I think, is quite fascinating because, again, most people are like, screw cardio. Cardio sucks. You know, we, we fall into the, these binary dichotomous thinkings where cardio is bad, only lift weights. Well, I think a little bit of both is actually good, uh, depending upon what your time allows. So they say the individuals with greater capacity for muscle perfusion appear to be more likely to experience significant resistance training hypertrophy. So the more blood, the more volume as I mentioned, the nutrients that you can get into the muscle, it's going to augment or enhance the hypertrophy that you might get from the exercise. And so this study corroborates with other research findings that measures of increased muscle catheterization are reported with new trainers to increase up to 30% after they embark on an exercise program and baking in some aerobic conditioning on that might actually help that. Now, before we continue on and dive into these details, I do want to thank you for being here. If you're enjoying the content, thanks for hitting that like button. Leave me a comment below and be sure to share this with a friend so that they can get these details about why they might want to incorporate aerobic conditioning into their programming. Also, if you regularly exercise or you want to start exercising, we have formulated a novel drink mix that contains both electrolytes and creatine. New research shows that when you co-ingest creatine with electrolytes, it helps support healthy hydration hydration and athletic performance because the creatine transporter protein depends upon electrolytes. So if you're just doing creatine monohydrate supplementation alone, you might get more benefit when you co-ingest them with electrolytes, especially around exercise. Studies show that when you consume creatine around exercise, it increases the absorption by about 15%. And again, that transport protein to get creatine into your working muscles needs electrolytes to work. So you can save using the code podcast over at myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C.com, myoscience.com. Use the code podcast to save. I'll put links below. So let's go on and talk about how co-administering or doing concurrent exercise, that is cardio and resistance training, improves the, the size and the function and the hypertrophy of the type 2 muscle fibers specifically. The, the scientists go on to say our lab and others have previously shown that skeletal muscle capillarization associated with elevated aerobic activity might be a contributing factor for delivery of oxygen, nutrients, and growth factors to the muscle, stimulating muscle protein synthesis turnover of damaged proteins. So it's important to remember the capillary density of your muscles helps with hypertrophy. 
And so, of course, you need the signal from the resistance training, the strength training to drive the hypertrophy. But when you're also aerobically conditioned, you're improving the capillary density, which can help to get more mileage or more benefits from the resistance training sessions. In this study, we demonstrated that the aerobic conditioning plus resistance training leg had elevated muscular capillarization, which augmented muscle hypertrophy to a greater extent than the resistance training leg when analyzed independently. So that's, I think, important. And they go on to say that consistent with our work, the degree of muscular capillarization appeared to have an underlying influence on the muscle fiber size and potentially muscle fiber's ability to respond to resistance training stimuli. And what do they mean by the ability? The ability to deliver branched-chain amino acids, creatine, nutrients, and so forth, also energy, carbohydrates, and protein to stimulate muscle protein synthesis within the muscle. So you're probably thinking, well, when should I do my aerobic conditioning? And Mike, isn't there this phenomenon known as the interference effect, specifically referring to how aerobic conditioning can interfere with hypertrophy? Well, there's a large body of evidence to suggest that this interference effect, that is how doing aerobic conditioning can decrease muscular hypertrophy, is actually not as significantly important clinically as previously thought. There was a recent meta-analysis that actually looked at the fact that, you know, doing cardio, whether it's before training or after training, resistant training, that is, doesn't interfere with the hypertrophy benefits of that. So I think this is where a little customization comes in. If you're one of these people that likes to be fully warmed up for your resistant training sessions and you want to do cardio beforehand, as this study showed, you can still get in improved hypertrophy, more so than doing just resistance training alone. So this is where customization comes in. If you like to do cardio after you lift weights or do resistance training, do it then. But it's important to also recognize that this is why sauna therapy might be beneficial when it comes to hypertrophy because sauna is perfusing muscles. It's causing increased capillary density. The endothelial tissue within your cardiovascular system is being enhanced. It's an exercise mimetic. So this might also mean that doing sauna therapy, although that's not what this study looked at, I'm just sort of inferring and offering my opinion, if you will. I have noticed that since doing sauna therapy after resistance training, I get a better hypertrophy effect and I get faster recovery. This is really important. If you crush it in the gym, it's, you know, and you're sore for a week and you can't exercise as a result of that, that's going to slow down your hypertrophy progress. So, tools and strategies that can help accelerate the recovery can help you increase the volume and the load to get more benefits from your resistance training. So that's another th thing to think about. If you don't have time to do a bunch of cardio and so forth, but you have time to do a five, 10 minute sauna and you can do your walking later or walking in the morning. I think all of these things are synergistic modalities that can help improve hypertrophy, volume, size, and health of your skeletal muscle. And just to summarize, the muscle fiber type that seemed to be most improved here is the type two muscle fibers, which to my knowledge is involved in fast twitch. And these are the muscle fibers, the type two fibers that actually preferentially become atrophied with age. And so this is really important because as you age, you start to lose the type two fiber types. And so if you can augment that or slow down, reverse that atrophy or that loss with age, I think that's helpful. And they showed that there was an improvement in the cross-sectional area, more specifically in the type two muscle fibers. In conclusion, this study demonstrates that aerobic conditioning prior to resistance training can augment resistance training induced muscle adaptations and that these differences are associated with increases in capillarization. So just food for thought, you know, if you've been scared of doing cardio or you hear cardio is bad or cardio raises cortisol, all the things, um, you might want to rethink that. Because again, the health of the muscle depends upon the delivery of oxygen, the removal of waste products, and the delivery again of amino acids and, and uh, nutrients that help support the growth of that muscle. And it turns out that capillarization of the muscle can be improved when you, when you concomitantly do resistance training with cardio. And that leads me to my final tip here is let's not make our resistance training sessions cardio. A lot of people, they, they, they go from one set to the next and, and so forth. Provide adequate rest so that you can maximally induce the hypertrophy and get the most mileage, especially from your peak exercises. Uh, that is your squats, your deadlifts, your presses, your pulls. 
those peak lifts should be prioritized and you should have adequate rest between sets so you can maximize the load on the muscle and the time under tension during those sets. So when you're doing supersets or, and not to pick on CrossFit, but a lot of CrossFitters are basically doing cardio with weights. That's not inherently bad. It's still exercise, but you might get more hypertrophy by, by prioritizing that rest and so that you can replenish the glycogen and resynthesize some of the ATP that you, that you broke down and get rid of some of the lactic acid and so forth. So these are all tips, by the way, that are going to be covered in an upcoming glute masterclass with a friend of mine, Erica Grisanti. We have a lot of great details about how to squat, how to deadlift, how to hinge from the hip and do hip thrusts and, and how to really do this so that you don't hurt your back and maximize core strength and glute uh, activation because the glutes should be your biggest muscle in your body. So I'll put links below to that. And the articles that we talked about today, fascinating study. Stu Phillips was a co-author on this. Stu is doing amazing work, as are all the other scientists, lead scientists on this paper. So thank you to the research team doing the groundwork to help to translate this information to people like us so that we can have more science-based tools when it comes to improving the health of our muscle and our bodies. I want to thank you for watching. Thanks for sharing this content, and we'll catch you on a future episode down the road. Bye now.